Unveiling Kagame's Risky Decisions in Rwanda-Tanzania Relations. Welcome back to Africa Flashes. In today's episode, we delve into the strained relations between Rwanda and Tanzania based on insights from our reliable sources in Rwanda. Recent revelations show growing tension between the two countries, with Rwandan President Kagame expressing concerns during a cabinet retreat. Specifically, Kagame reportedly conveyed to his officials that Rwanda's relationship with its neighbor Tanzania is deteriorating, even worse than its ties with the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, and Burundi. Our source's information sheds light on the complexities of regional dynamics in East Africa. The deteriorating relationship between Rwanda and Tanzania underscores underlying issues that have escalated tensions between the two nations. These tensions have implications not only for bilateral relations, but also for broader regional stability and cooperation. Kagame's remarks during the cabinet retreat offer valuable insights into Rwanda's perspective on its neighboring countries. By highlighting the challenges in its relationship with Tanzania, Kagame has drawn attention to the importance of addressing underlying issues and fostering constructive dialogue to improve diplomatic ties and promote regional peace and stability. Furthermore, Kagame's comparison of Rwanda's relations with Tanzania and those with neighboring countries, such as the DRC and Burundi, highlights the severity of the situation. It underscores the need for proactive measures to address the root causes of tension and build mutual trust and cooperation between Rwanda, Tanzania, and other neighboring states. As tensions persist between Rwanda and Tanzania, both countries must prioritize diplomatic efforts to de-escalate conflicts and promote dialogue. Addressing grievances and fostering mutual understanding can improve relations and contribute to peace, security, and prosperity in the East African region. Once again, employing falsehoods and manipulation, Kagame wrongly asserted that the conflicts in the DRC and the hatred from Burundian authorities towards Rwanda stem from Tanzania's alleged ties with the FDLR group. Additional credible sources indicate that General Nyamvumba's nomination as Rwanda's ambassador to Tanzania might face challenges in obtaining approval from the Tanzanian government. The reasons behind this potential delay remain unclear, leaving Kigali in anticipation as they await Tanzania's decision. Due to the tensions above and Kagame's displeasure at Tanzania's deployment of troops in the SADC mission in the DRC, Rwanda has taken retaliatory measures. As a form of retaliation, Kagame has decided to redirect the transportation of imported and exported goods from Dar es Salaam to Mombasa, Kenya. This decision reflects the escalating diplomatic rift between Rwanda and Tanzania, impacting trade routes and regional economic dynamics. Furthermore, this decision significantly affects traders with operations established in Tanzanian ports and those reliant on goods from Tanzania. The shift in transportation routes disrupts existing trade patterns and logistical arrangements, posing challenges for businesses accustomed to utilizing Tanzanian ports for import and export activities. Consequently, some traders in Rwanda and neighboring countries are compelled to adopt alternative strategies to mitigate the impact of the redirected trade routes. This may include exploring alternative ports or routes for exporting their products to ensure continuity in their supply chains and minimize disruptions caused by the change in transportation logistics. In another retaliatory measure, Kagame's administration has targeted rice imports from Tanzania affecting businesses in Rwanda that are reliant on this commodity. Addressing the issue of rice imports from Tanzania, Rwanda's Minister of Trade and Industry, Dr. Ngabit Sinzi Jean Chrysostom, recently emphasized that purchasers of the purportedly substandard rice have limited options. They can either return the rice to its origin or sell it for animal consumption, as it is deemed unfit for human consumption due to quality concerns. This action underscores the escalating tensions between Rwanda and Tanzania and highlights the economic repercussions faced by businesses caught in the crossfire of geopolitical disputes.
Kagami's growing animosity towards Tanzania drives him to make rash decisions that may escalate into an economic conflict between the two countries. This conflict could adversely affect Rwandans residing and working in Tanzania. However, Kagami's indifference towards the well-being of Rwandans has been evident, notably when he closed the borders between Rwanda and Uganda. It's worth noting that the current closure of borders between Rwanda and Burundi is attributed to Kagame's interference in Burundi's internal security matters. This situation underscores the broader pattern of Kagame's actions prioritizing political agendas over the welfare of citizens and regional stability. To comprehend Kagame's increasingly hostile actions toward neighboring countries, we'll delve into Valentin Akayezu's analysis titled What is Happening in the Region and Its Effects on Rwanda? Through Akayezu's insights, we'll explore the underlying factors driving Kagame's seemingly self-destructive behavior and its implications for Rwanda and the wider region. By examining the intricate dynamics at play, we can understand the motivations behind Kagame's actions and the potential consequences for Rwanda's stability and relations with neighboring nations. When General Kagame resumed his attacks on the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, it became evident that his intelligence services had failed to thoroughly analyze the situation and anticipate the consequences of the offensive launched in April 2022. This lack of comprehensive assessment led to unforeseen challenges and repercussions for Kagame and his forces. Kagame's administration exposed itself to various risks and vulnerabilities by overlooking the potential ramifications of its actions, highlighting the importance of meticulous intelligence gathering and strategic planning in military operations. In the absence of a comprehensive analysis of the war's effects, it becomes evident that the conflict is rooted in the pretext of preventing genocide and protecting the Tutsi population. However, this justification lacks substance, as the war is founded on a fabricated cause, making victory elusive. Kagame's inability to secure a win is compounded by his previous failures, notably in Burundi, where attempts to assert dominance were defeated. By resurrecting the genocide narrative as a pretext for aggression against Congo, Kagame inadvertently exposed his intentions, prompting heightened scrutiny from regional observers. The failed attempt to leverage the genocide narrative in Burundi underscored Kagame's strategic miscalculations and contributed to skepticism regarding his motives. Observers in Burundi recognized that Kagame's invocation of the genocide narrative was a thinly veiled pretext for expanding influence and pursuing aggressive actions against neighboring states. This realization fostered a collaborative effort between Burundi and Congo to counter Kagame's destabilizing agenda and preempt his attempts to instigate conflict under pretenses. Burundi and Congo's collaborative efforts aim to thwart Kagame's machinations and prevent the escalation of hostilities based on fabricated justifications. These nations seek to resist external interference and preserve regional stability by aligning their interests and coordinating strategies. This proactive approach highlights a commitment to diplomatic solutions and collective security, effectively challenging Kagame's attempts to exploit historical narratives for geopolitical gain. In essence, Kagame's failure to secure victory in the region is attributed to his reliance on unsubstantiated pretexts and tendency to overreach in pursuit of strategic objectives. Burundi and Congo's collaborative response reflects a broader regional effort to uphold sovereignty and resist external aggression. By rejecting Kagame's narrative and prioritizing diplomatic engagement, these nations aim to mitigate the risk of further conflict and promote sustainable peace and development in the region. Had Kagame conducted a thorough investigation, he would have realized that using the genocide narrative as a pretext for war was no longer viable, especially after his Tigrayan allies failed to deploy it in Ethiopia. This tactic backfired, exposing its inherent flaws. 
Additionally, Kagami overlooked the significance of analyzing Tanzania's potential response to his actions. Tanzania's historical role in supporting liberation movements across Africa granted it diplomatic immunity and a strategic outlook prioritizing regional stability. Throughout its post-independence history, Tanzania has maintained a diplomatic stance that prioritizes non-alignment and regional cooperation, a legacy stemming from its role in hosting liberation movements. Kagame's oversight of Tanzania's diplomatic approach is evident in his failure to recognize the potential consequences of infringing on Eastern Congo, which borders Tanzania. Such actions could be perceived as a direct threat to Tanzania's security, prompting a robust response. Kagame's investigation should have delved deeper into Tanzania's strategic interests and historical alliances, as infringing on Eastern Congo could potentially encircle Tanzania and disrupt its regional influence. By bypassing Burundi and aiming to control key routes to Mozambique and Cabo Delgado, Kagame risked provoking a solid response from Tanzania, a country known for its proactive diplomacy and commitment to regional stability. Kagame's lack of thorough analysis and reliance on propaganda-driven narratives have led to strategic miscalculations and geopolitical tensions. Kagame's aggressive actions risk destabilizing the entire Great Lakers region by failing to anticipate Tanzania's response and overlooking the complexities of regional dynamics. This underscores the importance of informed decision-making and diplomacy in averting conflicts and promoting African peace and stability. During Kagame's strained relations with President Museveni of Uganda, he retaliated by halting Rwandan businesses operating in Uganda and reducing their reliance on the Mombasa port instead favoring investment in the Dar es Salaam port. However, when tensions escalated with Tanzania, Kagame reverted to utilizing the Mombasa port. These fluctuations highlight the deficiencies in Kagame's diplomatic strategy, which lacks a coherent and stable approach to international relations, instead relying on reactionary measures. Kagame's approach seems dictated by short-term considerations rather than a comprehensive diplomatic vision. His decisions appear driven by immediate circumstances, such as political disputes or economic opportunities, rather than a long-term strategic framework. This reactive approach has resulted in inconsistent policies and undermined Rwanda's credibility in the eyes of its neighbors and international partners. Moreover, Kagame's reliance on reactive measures reflects a broader issue of strategic planning and foresight within Rwanda's governance structures. Instead of proactively anticipating and mitigating potential challenges in diplomatic relations, Kagame's administration reacts impulsively to emerging situations, exacerbating tensions and complicating efforts to maintain stable and constructive relations with neighboring countries. Kagame's diplomatic strategy, characterized by reactive decision-making and short-term thinking, must improve Rwanda's ability to navigate complex regional dynamics effectively. Kagame risks exacerbating tensions and limiting Rwanda's diplomatic maneuverability in the long run by prioritizing immediate concerns over long-term stability and strategic foresight. Muhuzi's appointment as Chief of the Defense Forces, CDF, of the UPDF raises questions about its potential implications for Kagame and whether it reflects a strategic move by President Museveni. Some speculate that Muhuzi's ascent to this position may signal his intention to enter politics, potentially as a candidate in the 2026 elections. In this context, President Museveni's decision to appoint him as CDF could be seen as an attempt to sideline Muhuzi from the political arena viewing his leadership of the UPDF as a means to divert his focus from political ambitions. However, Muhuzi's appointment as head of the entire UPDF army is not without controversy in Ugandan politics. It raises concerns about the consolidation of power within the military and its potential impact on the country's political landscape. Some critics argue that placing Muhuzi in such a position of authority may further entrench the military's influence in governance, potentially undermining democratic processes and civilian control over the armed forces. Moreover, 
Muhuzi's elevation to the CDF role has historical significance in Uganda's political context. It evokes memories of past leadership transitions within the military and the role of military figures in shaping the country's political direction. This has prompted debates about the implications of Muhuzi's appointment to balance power between civilian and military institutions in Uganda. In summary, Muhuzi's appointment as CDF of the UPDF is viewed through various lenses, ranging from its potential impact on Uganda's political landscape to its implications for the balance of power between civilian and military authorities. The move raises questions about President Museveni's motivations and Muhuzi's future ambitions, prompting scrutiny and debate within Ugandan politics.